Gerard Groot October 1340 to the 20th of August 1384 otherwise Gerard or Gerhard Groot in Latin Gerardus Magnus was a Dutch Roman Catholic deacon who was a popular preacher and the founder of the Brethren of the Common Life He was a key figure in the Devotio Moderna movement Topic <inaudible> Biography <inaudible> Topic. Birth and education Topic. He was born in the Hanseatic city Deventer in the bishopric of Utrecht, where his father held a good civic position. He studied at Aachen, then went to the University of Paris when only 15. Here he studied scholastic philosophy and theology at the Sorbonne under a pupil of William of Occam's, from whom he imbibed the nominalist conception of philosophy. In addition, he studied canon law, medicine, astronomy, and even magic, and apparently some Hebrew. After a brilliant course, he graduated in 1358. In 1362, he was appointed teacher at the Deventer Chapter School. In 1366, his admiring countrymen sent him to Avignon on a secret mission to Pope Urban V. Topic. Religious life Topic. Soon after Groot settled in Cologne, teaching philosophy and theology, and was granted a prebend in Utrecht and another in Aachen. The life of the brilliant young scholar was rapidly becoming luxurious, secular and selfish, when a great spiritual change passed over him which resulted in a final renunciation of every worldly enjoyment. This conversion, which took place in 1374, appears to have been due partly to the effects of a dangerous illness and partly to the influence of a fellow student, Henry de Calcar, the learned and pious prior of the Charterhouse at Monachenhuisen near Arnhem, who had remonstrated with him on the vanity of his life. In 1374 Groot turned his family home in Deventer into a shelter for poor women and lived for several years as a guest of a Carthusian monastery. In 1379, having received ordination as a deacon, he became a missionary preacher throughout the Diocese of Utrecht. The success which followed his labours not only in the city of Utrecht, but also in Svola, Deventer, Kampen, Amsterdam, Haarlem, Gouda, Leiden, Delft, Zutphen and elsewhere, was immense. According to Thomas A. Kempis the people left their business and their meals to hear his sermons, so that the churches could not hold the crowds that flocked together wherever he came. The Bishop of Utrecht supported him warmly, and got him to preach against concubinage in the presence of the clergy assembled in synod. The impartiality of his censures, which he directed not only against the prevailing sins of the laity, but also against heresy, simony, avarice, and impurity among the secular and regular clergy, provoked the hostility of the clergy, and accusations of heterodoxy were brought against him. It was in vain that Groot emitted a publica protestatio, in which he declared that Jesus was the great subject of his discourses, that in all of them he believed himself to be in harmony with Catholic doctrine, and that he willingly subjected them to the candid judgment of the Roman Church. The bishop was induced to issue an edict which prohibited from preaching all who were not in priestly orders, and an appeal to Pope Urban VI was without effect. There is a difficulty as to the date of this prohibition, either it was only a few months before Groot's death, or else it must have been removed by the bishop, for Groot seems to have preached in public in the last year of his life. At some period, perhaps 1381, perhaps earlier, he paid a visit of some days. Duration to the famous mystic John Ruysbroeck, prior of the Augustinian canons at Gronendal near Brussels, during this visit was formed Groot attraction for the rule and life of the Augustinian canons which was destined to bear notable fruit. At the close of his life he was asked by some of the clerics who attached themselves to him to form them into a religious order and Groot resolved that they should be canons regular of St. Augustine. No time was lost in the effort to carry out the project, but Groot died before a foundation could be made. The initiation of this movement was the great achievement of Groot's life, he lived to preside over the birth and first days of his other creation, the Society of Brethren of the Common Life. He died of the plague at Deventer, which he had contracted while nursing the sick, in 1384 at the age of 44. The Brethren of the Common Life Young men especially flocked to him in great numbers. Some of these he sent to his schools, others he occupied at transcribing good books, to all he taught thorough Christian piety. 
Groot and Florence Radewins, his favorite disciple, founded at Svola the Brethren of the Common Life. In 1387 a site was secured at Windesheim, some 24 kilometers 15 miles north of Deventer, and here was established the monastery that became the cradle of the Windesheim congregation of canons regular embracing in course of time nearly 100 houses, and leading the way in the series of reforms undertaken during the 15th century by all the religious orders in Germany. Henceforth his communities, which were spreading rapidly through the Netherlands, Lower Germany, and Westphalia, claimed and received all his attention. He contemplated organizing his clerics into a community of canons regular, but it was left to Radewins, his successor, to realize this plan at Windesheim two years later. <laughs> Devotio Moderna a movement known as the Modern Devotion Devotio Moderna was founded in the Netherlands by Groot and Florens Radewins, in the late 14th century. For growth the pivotal point is the search for inner peace, which results from the denial of one's own self and is to be achieved by ardor and silence. This is the heart of the new devotion, the Devotio Moderna. Solitary meditation on Christ's passion and redemption, on one's own death, the last judgment, heaven, and hell was essential. In the course of the 15th century, the modern devotion found adherents throughout the Netherlands and Germany. Its precepts were further disseminated in texts such as The Imitation of Christ by Thomas a Kempis, which reached an increasingly literate public. In this context, small works of art such as diptychs that provided a focus for private worship enjoyed wide popularity. Legacy Geert Groot College is located in Amsterdam. See also Florens Radewins Hendrik Monde References Topic. Topic. Sources. Topic. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain: Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Groot, Gerhard. Encyclopædia Britannica, 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. This work in turn cites. Thomas A. Kempis, Vita Girardi Magni English translation by J. P. Arthur, The Founders of the New Devotion, 1905 Chronicon Windeschemens of Johann Busch ed. K. Grube, 1886, an account, based on the Britannica sources, is in S. Kettlewell, Thomas A. Kempis and the Brothers of Common Life 1882, I. C. 5, and a shorter account in F. R. Cruz, Thomas A. Kempis, 1887, P. T. E. A sketch, with an account of Groot's writings, is given by L. Schultz in Herzog Hoch, Real Encyclopédie, ed. 3. He insists on the fact that Groot's theological and ecclesiastical ideas were those commonly current in his day, and that the attempts to make him a reformer before the Reformation are unhistorical. <laughs> External links History of the Christian Church, CCEL.